So it's Friday in August, and I had to go to my yarn store this morning because Judy and Sue and I, Sue is here on YouTube, she's Sue K or Sue Vlogs, but I think she has her videos private now. We're all three of us going to do the Wildflower Sock as sort of a sock along. If anybody wants to join in, I'll put the link to the pattern, which is free, in the description box below. And what I wanted to do was to use a plain, non-vibrant sock yarn, plain, to make the sock so that the pattern, the little wildflowers, would show up. And I decided to do myself red socks. These are, of course, two balls. And the yarn shop wound them for me. How nice was that? Actually, I wound them after a lesson. And I'm thrilled with my little cakes of red sock yarn. So that's that. And of course, I had to buy a second um, ball and this is this is a brand new yarn from Schapel and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that well. It's called Das Par Schapel. Two balls of that that I wound as well. That's going to make a very excuse me. It's going to make a very interesting sock. It's got purples in and orange. Okay, so that's that. I finished my little footy. I should have said what the red sock yarn was. It's a new one as well, called Kobasi. Um, I finished my little purple trim white sock. And actually, I don't think I'm going to make a second. The purple isn't the same yarn as this. And this curls in when you wear it, and then the heel slouches down. So I think I'm going to go back to just ordinary white ones. I found another book to send to Vienna. Good families don't. Guess what they don't do? What they don't do is what's on the back here. See that little green man? It's a fart. So, see, mommy, 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 there's a fart on top of daddy. Good families don't have them. And further to me going with my grandson to buy a stroller for Kira and Claire, when we were in the shop and we had made the decision on the stroller that they wanted to have, we went, of course, to the checkout. And you didn't take the stroller, you took a piece of paper and then they went and got a box. And as we were approaching the checkout, and this was at Toys R Us, there was a man young man, maybe 26-ish, walking towards me with three boxes of Lego in his arms. Big boxes, like, you know, big, they were big boxes, like that. And it was the Millennium Falcon. And I could feel my heart start to rush a little bit as I saw this man walking towards me with three Millennium Falcon Lego kits. And I looked at my grandson and I said, look at that Aaron, do you see what he's got? And he just sort of grunted. And we got to the counter and this man with the three boxes had arrived just ahead of me and was with the cashier, checkout person. And I couldn't, I couldn't help it. My grandson disappeared because he can't stand it when I just talk to strangers anywhere. And I said to him, 
you're getting three, this, not to my grandson, to the guy that was buying the Millennium Falcon. I said, you're buying three of those? And you know, they're like $200 a box. He looks at me as though I'm some wacky, crazy woman. And he said, yes. And I said, three? I bet you cleared the store out. How am I going to get one? And I don't want that one because it's too... It's not enough pieces. The real Millennium Falcon, the big one that you can buy that costs $2,500 instead of just $200, is a lot of pieces. So this is sort of like the baby Millennium Falcon. But never mind, I did want it anyway. So I said to him, why are you getting three? And he looks at me as though I'm a real nut bar. And he says, well, one's for me, one's for my uncle. And I interrupted him and I said, and one's for me. My grandson, completely not visible, gone, completely gone. So the guy finally laughed and he said, well, we're just going to make, each one of us are going to make the Millennium Falcon. And I said, well, I'm very jealous. Lego's my favorite thing. And he left with his three Legos. And Aaron finally arrives back and he was looking at me, didn't say a thing. I give the woman the thing for the carriage and we go. I know, I know. If you see this, Aaron, the things you have to endure. One last thing for you. London, my town, where I live, my city, I guess it's a city, not a town, but when you compare it to Toronto and New York and Montreal, it's a little town. My city is, we're, we're inundated with a moth, no, a caterpillar that will turn into a moth. It's called the, and I wrote it down, the Hickory Tussock Moth Caterpillar. And they're poisonous. And we have them on our deck out the back. Pat got a picture. I'll attach it at the back. The hickory tussock moth caterpillar. And if you touch the little furry parts of it, they put sprickle, they, they put spear-like shafts into your finger that have poison and you have an allergic reaction. Well, it's like bee stings. No, it's like... What's the three-pointed leaves that give, give you allergies? Not poison sumac. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. It's completely gone. They say knitting improves your memory. Not so. That's it. That's all.